I will take this opportunity to outline our work on the development of carbon-based metal-free electrocatalysis for efficient energy conversion and storage. As we all know, the overuse of fossil fuels has caused serious air pollution problem. So it is now more important than ever to develop clean, renewable energy technologies such as solar cells, fuel cells, and water speeding technologies. One of the integrated energy systems we have been developing is showing on this uh, PPT. As you can see, we started from either photocatalytic or chemical catalytic water speeding to produce hydrogen gas and the oxygen gas from water and sunlight. Then fill the hydrogen gas and the oxygen gas into fuel cells to produce clean electricity with water as the only byproduct. Then the electricity can be used during the sunny days or can be stored in the, in the energy storage system like uh, uh, metal air batteries or zinc air batteries for lighter use. The waste water from fuel cell can be recycled for water splitting to produce hydrogen gas and oxygen gas to fill into fuel cell again to produce the clean electricity. So, and so forth, so on. If we keep this cycle to be closed and continued, we should be able to continuously produce clean electricity from sunlight and water. That's the ideal energy conversion system. So in order to realize this ideal energy uh, conversion system, actually we need to address three seemingly simple, but uh, actually not a simple reaction. That's ORR, oxygen reduction reaction, and the OER, oxygen evolution reaction, and the HER, hydrogen evolution reaction. This is because ORR plays important role to regulate the performance of fuel cell, ORR and the OER together are part, part for the zinc air batteries or other metal air batteries. And the OER, HER, must for the water spreading systems. Unfortunately, all of the three reactions require noble metal or noble metal oxide based catalyst. They are too expensive for us to commercialize even single clean renewable energy system like a fuel cell, not to mention the whole integrated energy system. But at the end of this talk, I hope I can convince you that we can use carbon-based metal-free catalyst to replace the noble metal or noble metal oxide catalyst for all of the three reactions and to realize this ideal integrated energy system. This is because about 10 years ago, our group discovered that nitrogen doped carbon nanotubes can be used as a metal-free catalyst to replace platinum for OR reaction in fuel cells. As we can see from the LSV results here, the letter curve is from the carbon-based catalyst with the black curve from the platinum catalyst. The y-axis is current density versus x-axis, the cell voltage. As we can see, the carbon-based metal-free catalyst can produce three times more current density than that of platinum. In other words, the carbon catalyst is three times more active than the platinum. If we cycle both catalysts under the same conditions, as you can see, the CV for a platinum catalyst shrink it. This is because the platinum particles aggregate into bigger particles during the usage and lost the surface area and hence the reactivities. But carbon nanotube is no, as it's free from the aggregation. So that's, you can see the CV is very stable even after many cycles. And also you, we have carbon monoxide introduced into the fuel cell from air or produced by oxidizing 
carbon containing fields like a methanol, actually the platinum catalyst will lost activity completely. This is because carbon monoxide will absorb on the platinum catalyst surface. Oxygen molecules cannot contact with the active side anymore. That's called the carbon monoxide poison in fuel cell technology. Because carbon nanotube will not absorb carbon monoxide, so that's why carbon-based metal-free catalyst is free from carbon monoxide poisoning. So if I summarize our results in one sentence, as we can see, carbon-based metal-free catalyst is more active than platinum and lasts longer, free from, is free from the carbon monoxide poisoning. Of course, it's much cheaper than a platinum because it's purely carbon materials. So you may wonder why carbon catalyst can work so well for the OR reaction, particularly in alkaline fuel cells. At that time, I asked my long-term collaborator, Professor Xia Zhenghai from North Texas University to do the quantum mechanical calculation. What he found is that because nitrogen atom has a higher electronegativity than that of carbon atoms, when we dock the nitrogen atoms into carbon nanotube network, nitrogen atoms will partially withdraw electrons from the surrounding carbon atoms to make the surrounding carbon atoms to be partially positively charged. This kind of heteroatom doping induced charge redistribution will affect the oxygen absorption mode. You, you can see the scheme here, the oxygen molecules absorb on the nitrogen free or carbon carbon nanotube by the end absorption. But if the oxygen molecule comes to absorb on the nitrogen doped carbon nanotube surface, somewhere along the, the positively charged carbon atoms, oxygen molecules prefer the side-on absorption. Side-on absorption will weaken the oxygen-oxygen chemical bonds to facilitate the OR reaction, which requires oxygen-oxygen bond breakage. So that's a theoretical understanding from Zheng Hai Xia's calculation. Actually, a few years ago, Professor Nakamura's group in Japan published a science paper. Uh, they performed elegant experimental work to support the uh, mechanism we proposed. Anyway, throughout this talk, the papers publication cited in green color are from other groups. In blue color are from our own group or through collaboration with my collaborators. Here, I also like to point out the nitrogen doped carbon nanotube we used for metal free catalyst in the fuel cell. Actually, was made by a technique we developed in 1999. So that's the earliest, if not the earliest, must be one of the earliest nitrogen doped carbon materials or heteroatom doped carbon materials. So anyway, we also know if we like to commercialize the fuel cell technology for commercial applications, actually we need to work with the acidic fuel cells, not the alkaline fuel cells. As I mentioned already, in alkaline fuel cells, carbon-based catalyst for OR works three times better than that of platinum. In acidic media, most of carbon materials not work so well anyway, but here we have tested the 3D nitrogen doped carbon nanotubes in PEM fuel cell in the acidic media, and compared with the best non precious metal catalyst, that's the iron nitrogen carbon system. As you can see from the results here, both catalysts produce similar open circle voltage with a similar peak energy density. But the ladder curve here for the long term stability results actually is from carbon materials. As you can see, carbon catalyst is much more stable than the best non precious metal catalyst. Actually, a few years ago, the world's biggest fuel cell company, Balalad in Canada, commercialized the first uh, fuel cell based on a non-precious metal catalyst. I guess that must be an nitrogen carbon system. As we can see the results, uh, we obtained the carbon-based catalyst 
works similar as a non-precious catalyst, the best non-precious metal catalyst, but more stable. So if the non-precious metal catalyst can commercialize the fuel cell now, the metal-free carbon catalyst should be able to go along with. So anyway, uh, following this is earlier work, our group, along with many groups in the field now, uh, demonstrate nitrogen dopped graphene can also work as a metal-free catalyst for all our very well. And the nitrogen dopped 3D graphite also works well. And boron dopped carbon nanotube works as a metal-free catalyst for all our very well too. We found that boron nitrogen cool dopped works even better than any of the nitrogen or boron single atom dopped at carbon nanotubes. And nit carbon nitrite, 2D carbon nitrite, also works as a metal-free catalyst. And the 0D nitrogen dopped a carbon quantum dot also works very well for ORR. Actually, more recently, a 2D graphene has also been demonstrated to be a metal-free catalyst for ORR. As we can see here, from 0D carbon dots, slow 1D carbon nanotube, and uh, 2D graphene and uh, uh, carbon uh, nitride to 3D graphite. All of them can be dropped into metal-free catalyst. Anyway, among all of them, actually, the 3D nitrogen dropped graphene form or very really ordered uh, vertically aligned nanotube and like graphene uh, pilot 3D architecture works for be, will be the best metal-free catalyst. This is because 3D architectures has a, a large, larger surface area to maximize the exposure of the active site, and also electrons can move along the carbon frame very efficiently, while electrolyte can diffuse into the holes or out of the holes very efficiently. Anyway, there are so many heteroatoms can be used to drop so many different carbon materials into metal-free catalysts. So one of the obvious questions we need to address is that how many heteroatoms can be used to adopt how many different kinds of carbon nanomaterials into a metal-free catalyst? Obviously, this question cannot be addressed by experimental work. So I started to think and to search information from the internet. As we know nowadays, we can find many useful information from internet. So one of the a distorted elemental, uh, elemental periodic table I found from the internet. Actually, it looks very ugly, but it serves our space, our, our purpose very well. One of the silent of feature for this elemental periodic table is that all the elements in the table has electronegativity increase along the y-axis. So now if we look at nitrogen of the carbon nanotube, because nitrogen has a higher electronegativity, electron will transfer from carbon to nitrogen, and to make the carbon atoms to be partially positively charged to act as an active side for the OR reaction, as I mentioned earlier. So now, if we look at boron of the carbon nanotube, electron will transfer from boron to carbon, nano, carbon atoms. And then carbon is negatively charged, and the boron is positively charged. Why boron of the carbon nanotube can also act as a metal-free catalyst for ORR. This is because when oxygen molecules come to absorb on the heteroatom of the carbon materials, oxygen molecules cannot tell what the elements on the carbon surface. But as long as oxygen molecules feel somewhere has a partially positive charge atoms, oxygen molecules will prefer side-on absorption to enhance the ORR activities. So in the boron of the carbon nanotubes, actually it is a partially positive charge of boron atoms works as an active site. So if this understanding is correct, now we shall be able to conclude all the elements in the uh, periodic table, as long as they have different electronegativity from that of carbon, we can drop them into graphitic carbon materials. We shall be able to get a, carbon-based metal-free catalyst. The graphitic structure is required to support the heteroatom doping-induced charge transfer. So anyway, 
apart from the ORR reaction, we can use carbon metal free catalyst. Actually, some cool doped carbon materials like uh, nitrogen phosphor cool doped 3D carbon materials actually can work as a bifunctional catalyst for both OR and the OER. So now we can use a bifunctional carbon materials to replace uh, metal air electrode in zinc air batteries. As we know, metal air batteries, the discharging process is OR reaction, and the charging process is an OER reaction. Actually, the carbon-based zinc air battery we reported works as good as or even better than the metal uh, counterparts by using platinum for OR and lucidium dioxide for OER. Professor Zheng Haixia did a theoretical calculation for us again here in this study. This time he did the DFT calculation. What he found is that in the nitrogen and the phosphor cooled up 3D carbon materials, the nitrogen domain works as a metal-free catalyst for OR, works better than platinum, as I mentioned earlier in alkaline media. And the nitrogen force for cooled up the domain works for the uh, OER reaction as active site and works as good as uh, lucinium dioxide. Anyway, the theoretical calculations consist very well with our experimental observation. So if we adopt the cooled up the material by a third petroatom, like a fluorine, so we actually can introduce three tribal functionalities. Now, the nitrogen phosphor following tri adopt carbon materials can work as a trifunctional catalyst for OR, OER, and HER. So now we can use this material as OR and OER bifunctional catalyst to make zinc air batteries. Then to use these zinc air batteries to power water splitting system, also using the same carbon materials as OER and HER by functional catalyst. Now let me show you a shorter video to see how much hydrogen and oxygen gas we can produce by this uh, system. As you can see, a lot of oxygen and hydrogen gas can be produced, if we, particularly if we try to calculate the yield of the hydrogen oxygen gas per unit mass of the catalyst. As we know, carbon materials is lighter weight materials. So the yield will be much higher than any metal catalyst. So anyway, we have enough oxygen and hydrogen gas produced from water species now to be filled into the fuel cell to produce clean electricity. And the electricity can be stored in the zinc air batteries or the as uh, units in these integrated systems based uh, carbon uh, metal free electrocatalyst. So now uh, you can see we have realized the ideal integrated energy system mentioned at the beginning of the talk by using a carbon metal free catalyst. Anyway, so far we know well how, how we can make a carbon into metal free catalyst and how can we make them into bifunctional catalyst or trifunctional catalyst and how useful they are for energy uh, systems. So what's next? Actually, a few years ago, our group, along with many other groups in the field, uh, were puzzled by some of the carbon materials. Even without um, heteroatom doping, they can act as a metal-free catalyst such as the carbon graphene nanolabin supported quantum dots, carbon dots, or some of the partially crystallized graphitic materials. Later people realized actually this kind of carbon materials contains a lot of the defects. And defects can also induce the metal-free catalytic activities. This is because, as I mentioned earlier, heteroatom doping will induce inhomogeneous charge redistribution along the graphene or graphitic networks to cause the catalytic activity. So now if we imagine if you have a really a larger piece of graphene sheets with perfect carbon network, if we can eliminate the age effect, so all the atoms on the 
laughing surface will have same uh, electron density. But if you punch the hole through the graphene sheet, actually you introduce the inhomogeneous charge distribution now, because at the edge of the holes, the carbon atoms will have different electron density from the carbon atom away from the edge. So that's why the holes can also induce the catalytic activities for carbon materials, even without heteroatom docking. So now we know we have point defector in carbon materials or line defector or even two dimensional uh, defector if you punch a hole here. So what's the kind of defector can be most active for the defector uh, induced uh, catalytic activities? Yao Shandong's group in Australia actually last year uh, demonstrated it is the age handicon defector, which uh, uh, works as the most active defector induced uh, catalytic active site. So as we can see now, we can have carbon materials stopped by heteroatoms to become metal-free catalyst or by induce the defectors to make the carbon materials into metal-free catalyst. So what's the next? Is that the end of the field? Actually, it is not. So one of the obvious uh, area we can work on is that if we can make uh, carbon materials with perfect structure without a defector, even without heteroatom doping, can we make them into metal-free catalysts or not? So according to the principle I mentioned earlier, as long as we can make a carbon surface with inhomogeneous charge distribution, we should be able to make uh, the perfect carbon materials even without heteroatom doping or without the defector to be metal-free catalyst. Here, just to show you one example, here we just reported recently. So it will absorb C60 along the very long a single wall carbon nanotubes who have a perfect uh, carbon network structure. But as we know, C60 is a very good electron acceptor, can induce in homogeneous charge distribution along the carbon nanotube surface. So that's why we can say that C60 and carbon nanotube composite materials here without a defector, without nitrogen or other heteroatom doping can show really good catalytic activities, activities for OR, OER, and HER. So anyway, uh, people around the world also have found, including us also, have found that apart from OR, OER, and HER, metal-free carbon catalysts can also be used for many other reduction or oxidation reactions. Here, for example, if we simply replace the platinum cathode in disensitive solar cells, actually we can make a disensitive solar cells based on carbon materials to perform as good as their metal counterparts. This is because carbon materials here can catalyze the triiodide to iodide reduction reactions. And the performance even can be improved by making the 3D ordered aligned carbon uh, and the graphene structure after the doping by nitrogen. Here I will have no time uh, to show you how to make this kind of 3D structure, but I would like to show you a TM image was obtained by Dr. Ding Yong from Professor, uh, from Professor Zhongling's group. As you can see, each of the aligned nanotubes perpendicularly grow out from the graphene base. And the interface between nanotube and the graphene layer is seamlessly, is carbon-carbon chemical bound. With this kind of two-fiber structure, we make it into the disensed solar cells, actually give, it gives the best performance for all sorts of the fiber shift disensed solar cells. After knowing that the carbon metal-free catalyst can be used as a catalyst for uh, iodine reduction and uh, iodine evolution. Actually, uh, by working with uh, Zhang Jingtao, uh, we make the iodine lithium batteries. Actually, the cathode was based on carbon catalyst and the anode also based on carbon materials. That's a 3D carbon forms trapped 
lithium containing electrolyte to replace the lithium metal uh, anode. And we also found that some of the cooled off the 3D carbon materials can also be used as bifunctional catalyst for carbon dioxide reduction and the carbon dioxide evolution. As we know, the use of the fossil fuels also emit a lot of the carbon dioxide, which causes uh, uh, global warming and the sea level rising. So it is also important to remove carbon dioxide from air. Now we can use the carbon catalyst to make the lithium carbon dioxide batteries, which will not only remove carbon dioxide from air, but they also convert the chemical energy of carbon dioxide into the electricity. Professor Wang Yaobing in CSA in China actually integrated carbon-based OER electrode together with carbon-based carbon dioxide reduction electrode into a single electrochemical cell. So the net result is that to reduce the carbon dioxide to produce the oxygen molecules. So this is really a kind of artificial uh, photosynthesis system. But uh, interestingly, this artificial mimetic photosynthesis system uh, produces three times higher efficiency for the carbon dioxide to oxygen conversion than that of the natural photosynthesis system. Anyway, I was invited to summarize the field in year 2016. As you can see from the timeline table here, every year there are a few breakthroughs happening in this imaging field. And the more recently, uh, results of work actually were summarized into the special issue of advanced materials published last year for celebrating the discovery of the first carbon-based metal-free electrocatalyst. That's a nitrogen doctor carbon nanotubes. And also, uh, I published one of the edited book with two volumes on carbon-based metal-free catalyst for both uh, of the uh, journal and the books that you are invited uh, world leading scientists in the field to summarize the research areas in this uh, field. So for people who are interested more information in the field, I leave them to uh, such this uh, special issue and also book. So with that, I would like to uh, conclude my talk by thank you many of my current group members, the former group members and my collaborators and everyone who are actively working in this field. Of course, I would also like to thank you many funding agencies to support our research. Last but not the least, I would like to thank you all the audience for your time and attention. Uh, if I still have time to answer questions, I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you.